Hello guys, welcome to my channel. This is the second video of a series of three videos about leveraged ETFs. In this video, I'm going to show you how TQQQ compares with NASDAQ 100, SP500, some industry-leading tech stocks, as well as ordinary funds over different horizons of holding periods. It will give you a good idea as to how bad or good things can get with leveraged ETFs such as TQQQ in comparison to other investment products so that you can make a judgment for yourself as to whether leveraged ETF would be a good idea for your investment portfolio. I've picked some worst case scenarios, i.e. the long-term performance of TQQQ right after various market crashes in the past so that you'll have an idea of what the worst case would look like and therefore be aware of the biggest risk you could be taking with leveraged ETFs. So without further ado, let's get right into it. So as you can see, these are the tables I have prepared to show you the performance differences between QQQ3 and individual stocks and indices and some funds over different holding periods following the dot-com crash, financial crisis crash and the COVID-19 crash. So let's look at the first table. So this table shows you if you had invested the day before the dot-com crash, which would have been the 27th of March 2000, what your returns would be for these holding periods. So we see a lot of red here and quite shockingly for QQQ3 over one year, three years and five years, 10 years and 20 years, you would still have almost lost all of your money, which is really devastating. And compare that with some of these stellar returns over here with Apple, Amazon and Nvidia. After 20 years, you would have made so much money. And even 10 years returns are not bad. The worst is actually Amazon <laughs> over, well, amongst these three. Um, yeah, this far exceeds the return on QQQ3. And even with Intel, with AMD, um, you would have had a decent return. Well, I guess it's not really decent, but you wouldn't have been still losing your money after 20 years. You would have made some money. And even with indices with NASDAQ 100 itself and SP 500, you would have made over 60% after 20 years, assuming you'd invested at the worst time. So this is a really good example of how bad leveraged ETFs can be and how devastating it can be if you had gone through um, an extended period of bear markets and market downturns. Now, if we turn to the financial crisis crash, um, assuming you had invested the day before the crash, which would have been the 26th of September 2008, your returns would be now it looks so much greener. So every single one of these investments, including the stocks, QQQ3 and um, indices, you would have made plenty of money, even if you invested at pretty bad times right before the crash. I guess I've chosen a lot of technology stocks which were perhaps less impacted by the financial crisis but hey, that's the sector I care about the most. And I am certainly long um, the technology sector. I would go as far as saying over the um, whole of uh, human history, technology has been the surest bet long term. You know, the, the amount of industries and and aspects of human lives that have been majorly transformed, not just improved, but transformed by technology is countless. So in the long term, technology is definitely a sure bet. You know, that's my personal opinion. 
So we can see here, even if you had invested in QQQ3, which went down 40% uh, within the first year following the financial crisis, after three years, you would have started making money and you'd still be underperforming the NASDAQ 100. But after five years, you would be more than outperforming it. It's quite a big outperformance here. And 10 years and 12 years, that's a huge outperformance because the compounding effect. I guess that shows how much difference it makes when the government and central banks act quickly and keep pumping lots and lots of money into the system. Um, again, I don't know when that will come to an end and what the consequences will be when that happens, but it's something it's just something that's worth keeping in mind when the government acts quickly to rescue the the economy um, the equity market usually benefits hugely it's also worth noting though that after five years it would be outperforming some of the stocks here but not all of them netflix apple and amazon did much much better than qqq3 um, but if we move on to the 10-year accumulated returns, then it started to outperform Apple, but underperforming Nvidia, Amazon, and Netflix. And over 12 years, it's still done really, really well, um, clearly beating the indices. It has even outperformed Amazon and Apple but underperforming NVIDIA and Netflix. So it is a bit of a balance, really. It seems that over the long term, you could be better off holding QQQ3 than doing your own individual stock picking, which could be a pretty hard job to do. But that is reliant on um, the government acting quickly and them applying the rescue tactic of pumping money into the system. And for how much longer could that tactic be effective in rescuing the economy and boosting the equity market? I'm not entirely sure. Finally, let's turn to the last table, which shows if you had invested the day before the coronavirus crash, which would have been the 19th of February 2020, your returns after one year would be QQQ3, your money would have grown by 78%. Not bad at all. And that's almost double. Yeah, that's almost double NASDAQ 100. And this is a good demonstration, actually. It shows you how in the long term, QQQ3 does not track three times the returns of NASDAQ 100. But sometimes it could be more, such as in the case of financial crisis, over a long period of bull market um, boost. But sometimes it could be much, much less. It's a hugely volatile investment. So going back to the um, COVID-19 crash table, We'll see, I've chosen some of the funds here to just show you how, um, how well or badly <laughs> your investment would have done if you had just given your money to the professionals to manage. So some of two of these funds actually outperformed QQQ3, and that includes American Equity Fund, and this is a Global um, Artificial Intelligent Fund. These two did exceptionally well and Asian equity, Japanese equity, and global technology also didn't do too badly. They all outperformed NASDAQ 100, although they underperformed QQQ3, but for the outperformance of about 20 to almost 40%, depending on which fund you're looking at, is it worth taking the extra risk with a leveraged product? you have to answer that question for yourself because the answer would vary from person to person. It all comes down to how big your risk appetites are and how capable you are of feeding that appetite. So over this one year, Nvidia outperformed QQQ3, but it did out 
QQQ3 did outperform mostly uh, most of the other stocks. And all of these are pretty big players in a stock market. So the question is, would you have been taking more risks with QQQ3 or individual stocks? That's very much a question open to debate because arguably these individual stocks are not very likely to go bust. They are all well-established companies with a promising future and a long horizon ahead. So the risk of you losing a huge proportion of your money is probably quite small. Whereas with QQQ3, you are at the mercy of the market. If Nasdaq 100 crashed to the same extent as the dot-com crash, then you would be subject to a long period of losses. So I guess the approach to deciding um, whether one should invest in leveraged ETF or stocks or index funds is really a matter of what kind of risk you're willing to take and what kind of bet you want to place. Do you feel more comfortable taking the risk of a single company going bust or the risk of Nasdaq 100 going down by a third of its value on a single day or altern alternatively the risk of Nasdaq 100 really slumping for years and even decades. Which risk are you more willing to take and how much reward would you expect in exchange for the risk you are taking? Maybe it's not so black and white for you. Maybe you are willing to take all of those risks but in a reduced way so you dedicate uh, a proportion of your portfolio to individual stocks and proportion of your portfolio to leveraged ETFs and so on and maybe that's not a bad strategy because it diversifies the kind of risk you are taking and really there isn't sure wings in the stock market everybody is ultimately guessing we can take calculated risks but they are always risks and the worst case scenario is always losing all of your money and sometimes even more if you are shorting so my question for you is after seeing all these numbers and past performance comparisons about TQQQ, what is your opinion about leveraged ETFs? Do you still think they are a good idea to invest in? And how much of a percentage of your portfolio would you dedicate to leveraged ETFs? If you care to share your opinion, I would love to hear about it down below in the comment section. That's it for today. If you enjoyed this video, you might like to check out my other two videos on the same topic as well. You can click the link right here to check them out. And don't forget to click the like button as well as subscribe to my channel for all my future updates on the subject of investing. I'll see you at the next video. Bye everybody.